Hi, I'm Melissa Williams Murphy, and welcome to Class at Home with the I Write Organization. I'm here with my writing buddy, I the Guy, who also happens to be the mascot at I Write to get all of you inspired to create characters and stories. Each week, you're gonna get to hear from authors and illustrators. Some of them are even kids. So be sure to grab your brainstorming notebooks, maybe even a sketch pad, and definitely a pencil or a pen because your imaginations are going to soar as we create characters, illustrations, stories, and even some comics together each week at home. Now, if you need more resources, be sure to check out our website at www.iwrite.org. We have all kinds of creative writing and illustration activities for kids of all ages. We even have an annual publishing contest for kids to become professionally published authors and illustrators. So be sure to check us out. All right, I the guy, are you ready to meet some of our superstars? I thought so. Let's go ahead and see what all of the kid authors and illustrators are up to at iWrite. We have so many interesting story characters on today's show. When we write stories, we want to make sure that our main character is unique. What does unique mean? It means that they're like no one else, so our readers will remember them because they're so different. Let's meet a character that I got to create a few years ago in the Little Miss Molly book and see what makes her unique. Of all the colors in the world, Little Miss Molly loved the color pink. Bright pink, light pink, hot pink, magenta, and her ultimate favorite, princess pink. All princesses wear princess pink. Her room was pink, her dresses were pink, even her pet dragonfly's bow was pink. That's Tink. She's a princess too, a fairy princess. Pink flowers for planting, pink tutus for dancing, pink ribbons and bows for tying. She even had pink pom-poms for cheering. After ballet class, knowing how much Molly loved dragonflies, her mom held up a green dress with flowers and dragonflies all over. Wouldn't you like to try another color? She asked Molly. But mother, I'm a princess. I only wear pink, she said and leaped across her bedroom. Molly loved the attention her pink ensemble always brought and vowed never to wear another color. Tink vowed only to wear pink too. So each and every morning, Molly arrived at school dressed in pink, pink, and more pink. All of her classmates noticed her fashionable style. That's a pretty pink purse, Katie Cat said. Molly curtsied. Why, thank you. Is that pink nail polish you're wearing? Billy Goat asked. Molly held out her hand. Why, yes. And batted her eyelashes. It's called Pris and Pink. I love your pink tutu, her best friend, Little Bit Turtle, said. Molly performed an arabesque and leaped to her desk with a smile. Every day, the bunny rabbit twins, Britton and Beckett, asked. 
Why do you always wear pink, Molly? Why just one color? Yuck. Molly always told them the same thing. Princesses only wear pink. That's why. One night, while Molly and Tink were reading a bedtime fairy tale about their favorite things, princesses and fairies, her mother tried again. Look what I found. A new blue dress for your special day. Tomorrow was Molly's birthday. Molly looked up from her book and bedtime snack. She still insisted. No way! A princess must always wear the color pink. Look, it shows it right here in my book. Her mother shook her head and collected Molly's clothes for the wash. Where are you taking my pink dresses and gowns? Molly asked. Princesses must always wear clean clothes, too. Her mom answered with a smile. On the morning of Molly's birthday, she woke up Tink and leaped to her closet to find her favorite pink dress with the white polka dots. But the dress was nowhere to be found. Tink sat on Molly's shoulder as she searched and searched. Then she remembered her mom had taken her dirty clothes for the wash. She ran downstairs and opened up the dryer. Molly screamed. She pulled out her favorite dress. Purple? All of her pink clothes inside the dryer had turned purple. Her mother arrived to see Molly holding the purple dress, tears running down her face. Mrs. Green looked inside the dryer and found a navy blue sock. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. It looks like your brother's baseball sock was washed with your pink things. It dyed everything purple. <laughs> Molly's big brother, Iggy, crept back upstairs before he got blamed. <laughs> purple is pretty too, dear. <laughs> Mrs. Green helped Molly put on her purple polka dotted dress. But Molly was not happy. Princesses wear pink. Molly arrived at school with a beautiful birthday crown on her head. She looked just like a princess. But no one noticed the fabulous pink ribbons hanging from Molly's crown. Instead, everyone was shocked that Molly was not wearing pink. Then, Molly noticed that Katie was wearing a princess pink rhinestone collar. Hot pink dangly earrings hung from Billy's little horns. Little Bit had a pretty pink bow on top of her head. Even Molly's teacher, Mrs. Puff was wearing a pink poodle skirt. Molly's cheeks burned bright pink. No! Molly screamed. You all can't wear pink? Why? Little Bit asked. I thought you liked pink. I do, and it's my favorite color. <laughs> Molly's lip quivered as she looked down at her purple dress. Then the tears came. Mrs. Puff walked up to Molly, knelt down beside her, and asked, What's wrong, dear? Molly whimpered. Everyone is wearing Princess Pink except me. Mrs. Puff told the little lizard, Everyone brought something pink to surprise you for your birthday. But I don't want to share my favorite color, Molly grumbled. Mrs. Puff whispered in Molly's ear, The prettiest princesses are the ones who share their favorite things. Molly sat on the ground and pouted while she thought about all of her favorite princesses and how nice they were to others. The twins walked up to Molly and handed her two pink tulips. Happy birthday, they said. Really? For me? Molly stood up and sniffed the tulips. Yes! Britton and Beckett laughed. We, we don't, don't even, even like, like pink. pink. Molly wiped her tears away just as the door opened. In came her mother and Tink with pink birthday cupcakes, each adorned with Molly's favorite fruit, a green olive. Hooray! The class yelled, Molly's mom kissed her and handed her a bright pink bag. 
Molly untied the fancy curly Q ribbons and pulled out a brand new princess pink dress. Aren't you going to go put it on? Little Bit asked. Molly looked around the room at all of the pink things her friends brought to school and smiled, saying, Don't you know, princesses also wear purple. Molly put down her new dress and began passing out all of the pink cupcakes to her classmates. Tink helped, too. That afternoon, Molly invited all of her friends to come over for a birthday tea party. It was a party fit for a princess. For the first time, little Miss Molly didn't mind sharing all of her pink toys, costumes, and teacups. Everyone wore pink, too, except Molly. She wore purple. The end. Molly is definitely a unique character, right, Ida Guy? Hey, you have a little sister. I wonder if she would want to join us while we talk more about Molly's story. Great. Well, then I can't wait to get started. All right, Ida Guy, let's make a quick chart so that we can talk a little bit more about the Little Miss Molly story. Here comes your sister, Lil I. Glad you could help. So we will put our main character in the first box, and then we're going to add in a few of our secondary characters, our setting and the problem. So you can probably guess that Molly is the main character in the Little Miss Molly story. So Lil I, what made Molly unique in the story? Molly would only wear pink. That's correct. Let's take a look at some of the secondary characters. There's Tink. That's Molly's sidekick. We also had Miss Puff, and she was a mentor character. That's Molly's teacher. She gave Molly some really good advice about how princesses are always nice to others, remember? Now let's take a look at the setting. We know there were a few different settings in the story, but the main one was school. What other settings do you remember? Her bedroom, and then she was also outside at the playground. Now for the problem. Maybe Lil I can help us with this one. That's right, Molly's favorite pink dress was dyed purple in the wash. Which means now it's time to talk about the solution, which means we also want to talk about the lesson learned and how the character changed at the end of the story. Thanks to Molly's friends and all the small acts of kindness, she quickly realized that it is much better to share her favorite color. She also learned that you can be a princess no matter what color you wear. In the end, do you think Molly changed? I think so. I think she was kinder, wiser, and definitely more open-minded. Now it's time to meet another unique character. I write author Kurt Kaufman will be reading his story, My Life as a Jalapeno with Spiceophobia. And illustrator Ryan Shaw will even be teaching us how to draw some of our own spicy, unique characters at the end. My name is Kurt Kaufman and I'm 18 years old. Uh, I'm in Sugarland, Texas, and today I'm going to be reading my story I wrote in the fourth grade, My Life as a Jalapeno with Spicophobia in this book. I put on my... Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm Xander Jalapeno Habanero. I have a phobia called Never Conquer Spicephobia, aka Spicephobia, the fear of spice. I stop interrupting. I put on my clothes and set off to get the work done. My mission, to rid the city of Orlando of as much spice as possible. That's just what I do. I hate spice because it scares me. My first target was Harry's Sushi Bar to take wasabi off the menu. Two security guards were guarding the wasabi vault as I entered through the back entrance. Harry's wasabi was so famous that they kept it in a vault all by itself. I waited until the guards went on a bathroom break. Both of them went because the one with muscles was too afraid to go by himself. When they stepped away, I turned the wheel on front of the vault and the vault door opened. I guess they figured they could leave it unlocked as long as the two big guards were there. I climbed up the wasabi shelf and where I found a note that said, Beware, don't take this wasabi. But I took the wasabi and left a note that said, Too late, I took your wasabi. 
I ran out of the vault and out of the restaurant, found a garbage truck, and threw the wasabi in the back of the truck just as it began to pull away. It probably ended up in a landfill far out of town. After that success, I felt pretty proud of myself, and I was pumped up to get onto Raul's Taco Palace to destroy the salsa. As I made my way to the kitchen, trying not to be seen, I narrowly passed a few waiters and looked in the kitchen to see a dozen more waiters grabbing plates from the chefs. I saw a giant pot of salsa cooking in the corner close to me, and I pulled out my plastic rat and threw it like a football at the pot. Score! It hit the wall and bounced right into the red stuff. It splattered all over me and on the floor. I left knowing that my work was done when the screaming started. I guess they saw the tail hanging out of the pot. My next victory would be to remove all the boxes of flaming hot Cheetos from Roscoe's Wholesale Club. I asked my friend Chester to give me a ride to Roscoe's in his Mustang. Once we got there, I thanked Chester and tried to find the snack aisle. I'd been thinking about how dangerous this mission could be because I didn't really want to get caught with those huge boxes of Cheetos. Roscoe's had really big boxes of snacks. Then I found that a worker had carelessly left his walkie-talkie between two boxes between couches. I took the walkie-talkie and announced on the loudspeaker that Roscoe's had just gotten a call from the Cheeto factory that a worker's dog had been licking the flaming hot Cheetos before they were packaged. Roscoe's will be destroying all boxes of flaming hot Cheetos immediately. We are sorry for the convenience, I said. I watched as Roscoe's workers scurried around like little ants as they loaded the boxes onto carts and forklifts and took them out of the store into the giant dumpsters. As I walked back to the front of the store, I got a funny look from an employee walking out of an office. I started to worry that they knew what I'd done, so I tried to leave quietly, acting like a regular customer. Chester was waiting for me in the back of the parking lot. When I got in his car, he asked me why the workers had just dumped all his favorite snacks. I told him I had heard something on a loudspeaker about contamination at the factory or something. As we drove to my house, I thought, I finally did it. I finally freed Orlando of Spice. But it seems I'm not quite as afraid of spice as I thought I was. I pulled it out of a vault. Some of it got on my skin. I carried it in my backpack and burned it to a crisp. The spice didn't hurt me, and it didn't hurt the others who touched it. Why was I ever scared of spice anyway? Maybe it has something to do with that nightmare I have of being chased by hot peppers. Oh well, I may never know. The end. Hello, uh, illustrator Ryan Shaw here, and uh, this week we are going to draw ingredients for salsa. Onion, tomato, jalapeno, garlic, and cilantro. All right, now that we have our paper and pencil ready to go, I'm just filling in the shape for the jalapeno, and then I'm adding the eyes and the mouth there and the stem at the top. And I'm making little simple stick arms and legs with the foot cups, as I call them. They look like little cups at the bottom there. Now I'm adding the garlic next to the jalapeno and he's waving at us. Adding stick legs and arms there. Then I'm gonna add the cilantro. He's a long stem, he has a bunch of long stems. He's giving a thumbs up. Then I add the feet at the bottom there. Remember, super light lines. And there we go, I'm adding the little leaves at the top. Now I'm adding the tomato. Wanted to erase and fix that. There we go, adding the eyes and the mouth. I'm making these guys look different. You know, tomato has a different expression. I love having them all look different in their own way, giving them each personalities. There we go, there's the onion. And if you notice, they're all rounded shapes except for the cilantro. He's a long, skinny stem. Now that we have it all sketched out, I'm going over with my ink pen here and just going over the lines I want to keep. And at the end, you know, we're gonna erase here, at the end of inking, we're gonna erase any stray lines outside of the ink lines. You can use any type of pen. You can use a ballpoint if you like, or a gel pen, or a marker even. If you use a marker, just make sure it's a thin tip. And now I'm filling in the foot bases there. Remember, go a little slow when you're using the pen, just so your lines are a little straighter. It takes a little bit of practice. But that's the cool thing about art is you just practice, practice, and you get better. It's like anything, you know, singing or playing sports, anything like that. It just takes practice. This hair, now I'm going to the tomato here. 
filling in his lines, giving him a little stem with his little leaves at the top. And he just looks a little confused. He doesn't even know why he's there, but he's there. Stems to the cilantro here. And uh, I'm also, you know, coloring in just, or not coloring in, but I'm uh, filling in where the leaves are on the top there. I'm going to the onion. And he's kind of a sleepy looking guy. And that's what I love about these characters. You can just give them their own personality and their own look. What are other what are other food items you might want to draw? That'd be fun. Draw draw a hot dog skateboarding. Try to come up with creative ways to draw while we're at home this summer. And now I'm erasing all my stray lines. And what we're gonna do here, lastly, is just color in everything. I'm using a marker here. You can use colored pencils. You can use Crayolas. All kinds of coloring methods. There's even pastels. So I hope you guys had fun this week. I'm filling out the cilantro here. And lastly will be the onion. There we go. I'm getting all those leaves colored in. There we go. And then what I'll do next is I'll add a little purple to that onion. And we are just about done here. Finishing up this onion. And remember... Be safe and stay creative. We'll see you next week for more illustration lessons. Hi, the guy. You know, we've been talking a lot today about how to make a story character unique, but I would love for all of the kids at home who also love to write poetry to hear from one of our I Write Kid Poets who has a really unique voice in her writing. You know, voice. It's the writer's style that makes their writing unique. Let's hear exactly what I'm talking about. My name is Mariah Adeyaka. Today, I will be reading one of my poems from the ninth edition of the I Write Anthology. Here is my poem, Waste If You're Blue and Blithe All Over. Part one, blue. Drink almond juice even though you're allergic. It's better to want to know how burning up inside feels instead of waiting to be healed on the outside. Get the opposite effect of what you originally wanted, even though you know what the outcome will be. Be weak while pretending to be strong. Someday, you'll think people will look up to you for it, despite always thinking, no, they won't. They never will. Part two, Blythe. Try to be meaningful with your love and express it through gemstones and candied licorice. Even though you know the taste and texture won't come out all that right, everyone around you will still appreciate your effort. Feel happiness unaidedly and somehow help others in the process. Grow confectionaries around your head to show your family how much they mean to you. Adore others without having to adore in return. Finish the leftover cake that the person on your speed dial left you for your 30th birthday. Part three, views. Hear these words. Build your own happiness. Plant magenta and cyan in your psyche. Let the TV reflect your thoughts. Be humane in your own way. Thank you very much. If you're creative and want to share your work with people all around the world, then you're in luck. You can win the chance to have your writing or artwork professionally published in a book by entering the I Write Nonprofit Organization's annual publishing contest. Show off your talent and inspire kids like you to go above and beyond. Winners will have their writing or artwork featured in our latest book. So, how do you enter? Write a short story, poem, or create cover art focusing on this year's contest theme, Outer Space. Then, visit our website and upload your submission. Students in the 3rd through 12th grades are eligible to enter. Visit iWrite.org for more details. I can't believe it's already time to go. But like we always say, time flies when you're having fun and you're learning. So until next time, everyone at home, keep reading, writing, and drawing, and we'll see you next week. Bye!